it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Hi, this is Ivy Slater. Welcome to today's episode of Her Success Story. Today, I get an opportunity to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to um, a friend of mine, somebody who I work with, somebody who I've known for quite a while, Josh Margulies. And should I, should I, I should ask you, should I call you Josh like I call you or should I call you Joshua? But you'll correct me in a moment. But Josh is the founder and owner of Mind Over Matter Health and Fitness, which is a virtual, is, is a platform that does virtual outside as well as in-home and corporate wellness. Um, he works in a variety of platforms. He has, tr- he has a full training um, staff that works in different ways. Um, they're all certified. I, and again, you know, listeners, if you can hear me kind of like, I want to just instinctly introduce you to my friend, Josh, <laughs> first give you the whole official bio here. So read the bio in the show notes, learn about Mind Over Matter and all um, it has to offer, which I take advantage of a regu- on a regular basis. But most importantly, I have recommended Josh in a variety of ways for um, young leaders who I know are going through the prenatal and, and, and managing, running a business, being an executive, starting a family. Um, I, we've talked about senior fitness when, when I, even with my own mom, and he's always checking in on that. Um, working in a variety of modalities, that works for you. And Josh, I have to tell you, and working with a variety of clients, the way it works for us. So thanks for joining me here today. I've been looking forward to it, Ivy. I'm happy to be here. So how did, how did this business start for you? Let's go back to some ground strokes here and say, how did the business actually start? So I've been, and I will say this about what you were alluding to before. So I am Joshua until you start working with me. And then I'm Josh. So Thank I'm you. Josh to my clients. Like I am Joshua when you're scouting me out, when you're thinking about, is this a guy that I want to work with that helped me reach my fitness potential? And then once you agree to that, then I'm your buddy, Josh. So yes. Um, I, listen, I have a background. I started you know, back when I was in school. Um, I have a background in something called sports psychology, which... Initially, when this happened, I had to tell people that it was a legitimate thing. This was back in the 90s to date myself. It, people didn't know what sports psychology, how is that going to be applicable to me? I'm not a professional athlete. What is that wrong? If it's good enough for a professional athlete, then it's good enough for anyone in general fitness. So I started to try to take the approach. I used to work with collegiate athletes, helping them, you know, visualization techniques, motivation techniques. Uh, these are people whose livelihood was based on their bodies. And that is their performance and long-term performance. Yeah, right. And, and they were a byproduct of that. And th- that's a lot of pressure and stress to operate under. But I, I always thought that that's the type of pressure and stress we operate under as professionals. Our livelihood is predicated and tied to everyday success. You know, a, a, a good phone call, a good Zoom meeting, a, a correct connection, we're always on point. We always have to be, except for, except for if you're a uh, entrepreneur, sole entrepreneur, run your own business, you're always on stage. You're always on the field. You're always on the court. Yeah. And that, and that like gets us talking and looking at, you know, keeping ourselves and the importance of keeping ourselves at pink performance as far as leadership, whether you're running a business, whether you're running a department, you're working at, you know, how do we stay working at our peak, our peak performance at, to, be running at our best and in running organizations that is so important. And I don't, you know, I don't think there's enough talk about the correlation between our body's wellness, our mind's wellness and how we show up in business. Without a doubt. And it's funny because, you know, we have, we have a history because we work together this morning, case in point. Okay. So you had a restless night's sleep. There was no way you were going to be at your peak physically for a workout, let alone mentally for the workout, the way you normally are prepared. And that would transcend into the rest of your day as well. So even something as simple as a good night's sleep, and it's, oh my goodness, that's not a cliche, right? Oh, just get a good night's sleep. 
but it's a cliche because it's it's true, right? It it starts and ends with that. And you know, I I truly think you know one one of the joys of our, our relationship and working together for me has been working. Um, I, I, I a former dancer, you know, but that was 30, 40 years ago, right? And and you know, it's important for me to keep my body in shape, not just because I, you know, back pre-pandemic was on stages and I will be on stages again speaking, but it's about it's about having the endurance and the strength to right. show up at the top of my game for my clients. And I know if how important it is for me to build energy. Um, and it's been great working with you because your 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 range and expansion, truthfully, you know, it's like some days it's a lot so of long. bodies focused, and then some <laughs> days it's like, bring out those weights, Ivy. You know, we're not getting yeah. any younger. Let's start moving. <laughs> I, I think like uh again, variety being the spice of life, variety being the spice of, of fitness and listening to your body that day there's some days where you're going to be more receptive to certain types of disciplines there's some days where we do more of a restorative style of workout what you need are oh, you know what let's just get on the floor let's get you on the floor let's get you grounded literally and metaphorically let's get you connected and there's other days where you know hey we're going to do some cardio today we're going to just kind of put you on blast we're going to put you on you know 100 percent full and adrenaline here so it, it's it's listening to your body, listening to your mind. Um, I've always been someone that has never been married to one particular discipline. I, I think there's a, a lot of trainers fall into traps like that, where you have to constantly sort of reinvent yourself. And it, fitness is an industry where information is always changing. If I even think about what I did with my clients five years ago, if I would look at a workout from five years ago, I would probably be embarrassed <laughs> of because of what we've learned over time, new ideas, new methodologies. So it's important like in any other business in fitness too, right? Staying abreast of what's happening in your industry. And, and I think that says so much because business is evolving. Lord knows the last couple of years has been a major business evolution, has been a huge technological evolution. And what is you, have you seen shift and change in your business in the last couple yeah. of years? And how have you adapted to that? It, it's amazing to think, you know, this was two years ago, the pandemic shift. Uh, sometimes, it, sometimes it feels like yesterday, sometimes it feels like 10 years ago. Uh, look, virtual training existed before the pandemic. It wasn't like it was something that just happened. I, I think it's probably perceived that way, but there were virtual training, live virtual training platforms way before that. But I think like anything else in life, sometimes it's like we're, we're forced to try something before we really get the idea if it works or not. And I think the, I'm trying to silver line everything and that's what I do for my profession. But I think the positive that came out of this is people accepting the idea of, of virtual training, that they can get a just as good of a workout, if not better, working one-on-one -on -one with somebody in this dimension right here. <laughs> not, in, uh, not in 3D, but in 2D. So I guess. Right. And, you know, I think that's true. People don't necessarily realize when you're that uber focused and there's no distractions in the gym and I'm not looking to the left of this person doing that, even if I'm working with somebody, or, you know, doing a class, you know, we, we get distracted. But when you really are on Zoom and it's one on one, you're very uber, uber focused. Yeah. There's, there's no way around it. And I say if, if, if for, and here's the bottom line, I, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I, I think we talk about things that people like the idea of working with the trainer with and number one's accountability. So having, it's hard to cancel a workout when you're, you're doing virtual, you know, even what we went through this morning, like you can always move it. it it's not like you don't get the workout and it's done. So with virtual training, you have to have one heck of an excuse to miss your week. There's always additional time to do it. It's more readily accessible. And look, it's another, I'm all full of cliches today, but you have to be consistent before you have to be good. And the virtual training lends itself to more consistency than anything else. You know, a couple of things I want to pick up on here, because I talk about business success. And I said, one of the, you know, if somebody asked me recently in an interview, um, if you had to give one, one thing 
that, that results in business success and somebody's success, what would it be? And I'd say consistency. That was my answer yeah. for the interview. Um, because it is about being consistent. And, you know, you're alluding to what happened this morning. So I'll share listeners. 2 a.m. last <laughs> night, I was awake. 3 a.m., I'm still awake. 4 a.m., I'm still awake. I'm supposed to meet Josh at 645. 5 a.m., I'm still awake. And I'm like, there's <laughs> no way can I, like, pound this out at 645. I, I've gotten, like, three hours sleep. And I wasn't sure if I was falling back to sleep. And I reached out. I let you know what was going on. For my our podcast recordings, although our recordings are 20, 20 to 25 minutes or about 30 minutes when you put the whole thing together, when our team puts it together, I always in my calendar build out an hour because technology doesn't know it's not, it's very often our friend and occasionally on those real occasion, not our friend. <laughs> and Josh came back, he goes, hey, we can, let's do the pot, let's report, record the podcast and then let's work out. And I'm like, yeah. I could, and the easiest thing for me to say, and this is one of the, the principles that I live by, is I just respond with, I can do that. It's that what can I do attitude. Like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. What can I do attitude? I, look, and that's the thing too. Like also the, uh, the length of the workout changing, one of our big changes was we went from a hour long workout to 30 minutes. And initially, I was a little bit hesitant of that because 30 minutes is not a lot of time. But what I've been finding is my clientele tends to be more consistent because 30 minutes seems manageable. Psychologically, you hear 30 minutes, you're like, I, I can do 30 minutes. Like, who cannot do? I don't care how busy you are. You have 30 minutes today to do something. As opposed to when you hit an hour, it can seem a little more daunting. Like, oh, my God, an hour. Where am I going to fit this in? So the idea of, of compacting the workout I think it makes it another way to uh, much more accessible. I, I think that's, I think that's true. And um, I, I wasn't sure how much I was going to like 30 minutes, but I noticed I can do it more often than I could find the hours. And that, you know, that says something to how you've addressed this as a, you know, as a business owner of seeing what's going on in the marketplace and every industry evolves. Why would not physical fitness evolve? Right. We were like everyone else. It's, you know, again, when this happened two years ago, I, I think and then at first there was panic and people were running for the hills, not knowing what, and each business has its own unique challenges, but, you know, gyms shut down in droves. This was, I would say behind, next to restaurants, gyms might've been one of the bigger pitfalls at the time. I, I mean, they're coming back. I don't know if they're ever fully going to be back, but, you know, I used to work in a gym with my clients. So I had to reassess. Okay. And that P word we all use, pivot, can this work? Can I do it in this format? And just like my clients had to come around to the idea of trying it, I had to. I had to say, look, can I make my style work? And I refined it. I, I changed my philosophies to the idea of no equipment necessary. Basically, you versus your body. I got away from the big machines, the heavy weights, and I got into form and function and posture, and push-ups and squats and dips and floor work and mat work and Things that have been around forever because they, they work, honestly. <laughs> they get results. They work, they're easy. And, you know, one of the things that when we were talking a couple of weeks ago, I said, oh, you know, it was, it was Monday morning. And I said, how's your week setting up? And you said, oh, it's really cool. I'm going to be in Jamaica. I'm going to be in Punta Cana. I'm going to Florida. And I kind of was like, what? He goes, yeah, <laughs> you know, now, now that this evolution has occurred, when my clients are going away on spring break and different activities, they're like, they still find the 30 minutes. Right, right. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite things. It's funny you say that. Like, I, I love it when clients are on vacation. I'm like, take me, take me with you. <laughs> like, let me at least enjoy 30 minutes of your vacation. So, you know, and I, th I think, you know, the, the idea of having, um, I, I truly think in business, in life, accountability, when you're looking for growth, expansion, success in any goals you put forth, and it doesn't matter what those goals are, you know, um, accountability is key. Great. And having somebody who shows up and holds you accountable and, you know, listeners, for those of you who know, I'm not trying to lose 10 pounds and I'm not getting married. If you check out, you know, Josh is like, no, I've been married for 30 <laughs> some odd plus years, but I, I, I have old injuries. I believe in being 
physically strong so I could show up at my mental best is really right. important to me. Um, right. I, in looking at this, how do, how do you see um, fitness evolving next? Where is it going next? You know, now we have that this virtual component down. Um, you know, uh, I think everybody ordered off Amazon at some point, the, the, the few at the little base weights or whatever it is, but <laughs> right. we are, where, what's happening next in fitness? What can yeah. we be looking for? I, I think, and you're hitting on it as well. And, and I think, uh, again, I'm going to silver line the experience of the last two years. There's so much more emphasis and attention being paid to mental health, psychological health, um, people, not just exercising from the neck down, but for what the exercise does for the most important muscle in the body, the mind. And I, I think people are starting to come around to that idea. There's all these physiological evidences and reasons why people exercise, the release of endorphins in the body. It's, it feels good. I know for some people who don't do exercise, that's kind of hard to imagine. There's, and I, as you and I know, there's a lot of days where it doesn't feel good. So it doesn't, <laughs> it's not all the time. But it is, it's that re release of the serotonin and the epinephrine and all these other chemicals in your body that make you feel good. So I think now there is more of a direction of exercising for not just the body, but for the mind. And, and, I, and I hope that's something that's here to stay. I do. I have, I agree with you. I, I it's so often, I actually said this to an attorney just yesterday when I was hanging up the phone, I said, when you hang up with me, we're going to end about five minutes early. And she's like, okay. I said, but our session is not over. I want you to get up. I want you to walk outside. I want you to get fresh air. I don't care if you walk around your house, you walk around your block based on your time frame. Refresh yourself, refocus yourself, and then come back. And it, there's that piece of adding in the movement and fresh air component that we all need. Agreed. Um, I, I, I truly am a huge believer that mental. Uh, I don't always feel great when I start. I might complain and, and, and complain a bit, but I feel good <laughs> afterwards. I feel ready for the day. I feel ready for whatever I'm going to tackle. And even, you know, if I'm working with Josh, if I'm doing something else, if I'm taking a long walk, I've texted pictures from hikes I've been taking the last I few love months. It. I love it. Yeah. Love those pics. I get to live uh, vicariously when you send me those. I like that. So Josh, if, if our listeners can have one tip or advice, whether they are, ex if they already have exercise in their life, or if they're just thinking like, you know, I never thought about the mental component. Maybe it's something I should visit. What's one tip or piece of advice you can give? So, so I, I, will, I will say this, and this is my experience of doing this for 15 plus years. Um, the clients that I work with that have a better track record of success work out in the first half of the day. Now, look, I believe you're either a morning person or you're not. And it doesn't have to be 6.45 in the morning, you know. But if you get your workout done up until maybe like 2 in the afternoon, you're going to get it in. If you leave it for the evening, life happens, as we know. You know, meetings run late, uh, family obligations, traffic, uh, all these components can happen. So uh, I, I know there's like some expression where any important decision you're supposed to make before 12 noon that day. Um, I might be short circuiting that one, but it's the same thing with, with exercise. I would say plan it for the first part of your day. Don't wait until after work. It's tougher to get it in then. It honestly is. I, I happen to agree. And I, I will say, because um, it was interesting because I worked out with my daughter the other day after work. Um, we were both on Zoom and mm -hmm. here I, I looked at her and I said, you know, when you were young, when I was in my 20s and you in my 30s and 40s, when you were young, I used to use my workout on my way home from work as my transition from working mom to, 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 to working woman to mom, <laughs> you know, it was right. my, was, was my transition. It was my mental transition, but I, I was diligent about it. You know, li listen, I, I, I have that work, um, dedication that that dancer mindset of when I say I'm right. going to do something I'm going to do it you do <laughs> agreed <laughs> Josh how can our listeners find out more about you and uh yeah 
<laughs> everything and and follow you and check check in with you certainly yeah our our, our best tool is is, is our website we're, we're mind over matter nyc even though we're virtual i'm based in new york so mind over matter nyc.com is the website and you can find us on instagram facebook mind over matter nyc uh and if you want to contact us through there there's a form if you want to enter some of your info and we do a, like a complimentary sort of like 20 minute uh initial consultation with all potential clients just to kind of vet them and see how we're going to work with them going forward. And listeners, I will say, no matter what, at the end of today, think about how you're taking care of your physical and mental health. It is vitally important for when, you're, when you have your eye on long-term growth, long-term success, whether you're a business leader, a founder, a CEO, or just starting out. Josh, thanks for joining me here today. My pleasure. Thanks, Ivy. And take a moment. What are the takeaways from listening in today? Put those, note, put those in the notes below and commit to one action you're gonna do from that takeaway. Success is about, being, about implementing those actions. Thanks for joining us, hit subscribe. This episode was meaningful to you. Share it with somebody that it could be helpful to. See you next time.